In the swirling chaos that was the early universe, a melodrama of power, prophecy and survival gives birth to one of Greek mythology's most powerful figures, Zeus. The tale of his birth is a riveting tale that begins even before his existence, with his father, Cronus. Cronus, the youngest of the first generation of Titans, had overthrown his own father, Uranus or Uranus, to become the supreme ruler of the universe. On seizing power, Cronus received a prophecy that he would in turn be vanquished by his progeny, as he had done to his father before him. Shaken by this prediction, Cronus resorted to a grim solution. He swallowed his children whole at the time of their birth. His first five children, Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Hades and Poseidon, met with this dark fate, leaving their mother, Tetaness Rhea, in sorrow. Rhea could not bear the injustice of losing her children and schemed against Cronus at the time of Zeus's birth. Instead of allowing Cronus to devour Zeus, Rhea tricked Cronus by handing him a cloth-wrapped stone to swallow, saving Zeus from this eerie fate. As Cronus consumed the stone he thought to be his son, Rhea was secretly spiriting away the real newborn Zeus to the island of Crete. On the island, Zeus was raised in secret and kept away from the vengeful eyes of his father. In the bowels of the earth, amidst the mountains, Zeus was nurtured with magical honey and goat's milk. Supplied by the divine goat Amalthea, he was shielded from his father not just by the physical terrain, but also by noisy curetes. These warriors would clash their swords and shields to mask the cow's mewling. Keeping the wailing sounds of baby Zeus under wraps, Zeus grew up safely in this hidden sanctuary, while his father Cronus ruled oblivious and unchallenged. Little did Cronus know that his doom wasn't to be found in the stone nestled in his stomach but in his last-born child, raised with the zest for revenge and the will to reclaim his lost siblings. And that's how the story of Zeus, the most powerful god in ancient Greek mythology, begins. A true clandestine birth story that holds the beginnings of a tale of power, revenge and sovereignty. Chapter 2. The Rise of Zeus as Zeus matured into a powerful deity in the secluded reaches of Crete, there was a burgeoning desire within him to liberate his swallowed siblings and overthrow his father's oppressive reign. This determination set the stage for one of the most critical episodes in Greek mythology, the Titanomachy or the War of the Titans. Zeus returned as a divine yet unassuming cupbearer to his father's court. Zeus carried a visceral determination to deliver justice for his silenced siblings. Seizing an opportune moment, he served Cronus a specially prepared concoction. As soon as Cronus drank the potion, a great heave stirred within him, compelling him to regurgitate the stone he had swallowed and the gods he had devoured. Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Hades and Poseidon stood before Zeus as grown deities. Thus began the Titanomachi, a colossal ten-year war between the Titans led by Cronus and the Olympians led by Zeus. The earth shook and the skies set ablaze as the two divine factions clashed in a struggle for cosmic dominance. Zeus and his siblings sought allies in the virtually invincible Cyclopes and the hundred-handed Hecaton Ceres, who had been imprisoned by Cronus in Tartarus, the deep abyss. In return for their freedom, the Cyclopes equipped Zeus with his signature symbols of power, the thunderbolts and lightning that he would be henceforth known for. As destined at the end of the long and cataclysmic battle, Zeus and his Olympians emerged victorious. Cronus was overthrown and along with the Titans banished to Tartarus. Some versions narrate that Zeus castrated Cronus, just as Cronus had done with his father. Zeus then took his place as the ruler, the king of all gods, with his domain being the expansive sky. His brother Poseidon took control of the sea, and Hades took reign over the underworld. The Olympians shared other parts of the world, but none held authority above that of Zeus, marking his rise as the supreme Olympian god. From an infant smuggled away for survival to a ruler commanding thunderbolts and lightning, this was Zeus's spectacular ascent to power. His rise spelled not just the end of his father's cruel reign, but also the dawn of a new era where Olympians held the strings of the world, weaving tales that would captivate humanity for millennia to come. Chapter 3. Zeus's Iconography Once Zeus assumed power, 
he quickly became one of the most identifiable figures in Greek mythology, recognized by several associated symbols. These icons became representations of his supreme power, highlighting his influences, abilities and status as the king of the gods. The most recognizable symbol of Zeus's power is his thunderbolt. Crafted for him by the Cyclopes during the Titanomachy, the thunderbolt represented not just his command over storms, but symbolized his unforgiving justice and omnipotence. Whenever Zeus unleashed his thunderbolt, it signaled his divine intervention, be it punishment towards transgressors or mere demonstrations of his ultimate power. Another prominent symbol associated with Zeus is the eagle. Known for its strength, authority and dominance over the sky, the eagle resonated perfectly with Zeus's persona. The eagle was often widely depicted as the loyal companion of Zeus, frequently seen perched by his side or portrayed as his bearer carrying his thunderbolts or his messages. The oak tree, too, held immense significance in Zeus's iconography, considered sacred to him. Zeus was often represented in art and literature with an oak wreath. The oak was associated with his oracle at Dodona, which was inside an oak grove. The rustling of the oak leaves in the wind was believed to be the whisperings of Zeus himself. Finally, let's touch on the Aegis, a divine shield often related to Zeus, sometimes depicted as a short cloak and sometimes as a shield. The Aegis was seen as a symbol of protection and authority. These symbols, the thunderbolt, the eagle, the oak tree, and the Aegis, intertwined Zeus's influence in Greek culture, art, and life. They communicated his immense power, sovereignty, and divine wisdom in a way words never could. These iconic elements echoed Zeus's intent, his will, manifesting in nature and life, radiating the aura of a god whose colossal presence graced the pantheon and beyond, casting a might as wide as the universe itself. Chapter 4. The Family of Zeus As the supreme ruler of the Olympians, Zeus's lineage wasn't a simple one. From titans to Olympians, nymphs to mortals and monsters to heroes, his family tree encompasses an integral facet of Greek mythology. Before delving into his multitudinous descendants, let's talk about his parents, Cronus and Rhea, the king and queen of the Titans. As we've learned, Cronus swallowed his children on a prophecy's behest, warning him of his overthrow by one of his offspring. Zeus managed to save his siblings Hestia, Demeter, Hera, Poseidon, and Hades. Together, they formed the first Olympians. However, Zeus's family extended much beyond his immediate siblings after taking the throne. His primary consort was Hera, his sister known as the goddess of women, marriage, family, and child-rearing. Together, they parented Ares, the god of war, Hephaestus, the god of blacksmiths and fire, Hebe, the goddess of youth, and Ilithia, the goddess of childbirth. However, Zeus's marital vows to Hera did not keep him bound. His numerous affairs resulted in a multitude of divine and heroic offspring. With Leto, a titaness, Zeus fathered Apollo, the god of sun and Artemis, the goddess of the moon and hunting. From his liaison with the mortal woman Danae, the Greek hero Perseus was born. With Maya, he fathered Hermes, the messenger of the gods and the god of trade, thieves and travelers. Athena was born fully grown and in armor from Zeus's forehead, after he swallowed her mother, Métis, fearing a prophecy that one of his offspring would overthrow him. Persephone was the daughter of Zeus and Demeter, his sister. She was abducted by Hades while picking flowers in a field, leading to her becoming the queen of the underworld. Dionysus was born to Zeus and the mortal Semele. His mother, Semele, was incinerated by the sight of Zeus in his divine form during pregnancy. Zeus saved the unborn Dionysus by sewing him into his thigh until he was ready to be born. Another famous son of Zeus was Heracles, born out of his affair with the mortal woman Alcmene, revered for his strength and adventures. Zeus's mortal children also include Helen of Troy and Pollux, his children with Leda. Three daughters known as the Fates, who controlled the lifespan of mortals, were also born by Zeus along with Titaness Themis. The nine muses who were patrons of the arts and sciences were the offspring of Zeus and Menemosyne, the titaness of memory. In essence, 
Zeus's family encompassed an array of individuals, each weaving their own myths and legacies. Simultaneously, they all connect back to Zeus, reflecting his direct influence on several pivotal events and personalities in Greek mythology. Chapter 5. Zeus the King of Gods Zeus was not just another Greek deity. He was the ultimate figurehead of the Greek pantheon, the king of all gods, the ruler of Mount Olympus, and thus the heavens. As the king, Zeus presided over law and order, and his judgments were final. A central aspect of Zeus's kingship was his role in maintaining balance. All gods had their spheres of influence, but Zeus oversaw them all. Whether it involved resolving disputes among gods, intervening in mortal affairs, or exerting control over nature's elements, Zeus's rule was undisputed. Anything that occurred in the cosmos required his approval, and whether blessings or punishments, they were bestowed at his decree. His reign wasn't just of power but of wisdom as well. He was prayed to for guidance and justice. The Greek people held feasts and games, like the Olympic Games of ancient times, in his honor. Many of his attributes symbolized his kingly qualities. The thunderbolts he flung showcased his might. The sacred eagle that accompanied him represented his surveillance over the world. The royal scepter he held symbolized his authority. Zeus was not always a benevolent ruler. He was known to be a jealous god, punishing those who lied or broke oaths. His wrath fell on immortals and mortals alike. One of his most known acts was the punishment of Prometheus, who he chained to a rock for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to humans. Every day an eagle would eat Prometheus's liver, only for it to grow back and start all over again. Indeed, his reign was a blend of benevolence, wisdom, and terror. Through myths and legends, Zeus's role as king was enforced among the ancients. His rule seeped into every aspect of mortal and divine life, the embodiment of sky and thunder, the symbol of justice and fair play, and the epitome of the divine right to rule. Such is the essence of Zeus, the king of the gods. Chapter 6. The Powers of Zeus As the supreme deity of the Greek pantheon, Zeus was imbued with a myriad of powers, which he employed to maintain order and justice, display his wrath, or intervene in mythical tales. His powers were not just diverse, but monumental, representing his position as the omnipotent ruler of Olympus. Among Zeus's most well-known powers, was his control over the sky and weather. As the sky god, he could create all forms of meteorological phenomena. Zeus was the bringer of thunderstorms, the hurler of lightning and the summoner of winds. When the sky was clear and calm, it signified Zeus's contentment, but dark clouds and thunderstorms were manifestations of his wrath. Inextricably tied to his power over the weather was his signature weapon, the lightning bolt, symbols of raw power and the divine right to punishment. Crafted by the Cyclopes during the Titanomachi, these deadly weapons were Zeus's response to injustice and impiety. Any being, mortal or immortal, was at risk of receiving a thunderbolt from Zeus for their transgressions. Zeus also had the extraordinary ability to shapeshift, a skill he frequently used during his many pursuits and adventures across the cosmos. From turning into a shower of gold, a swan or a bull, to even taking on the likeness of other humans or gods, shapeshifting was very much a part of Zeus's power arsenal. Beyond the physical prowess, Zeus's powers extended to immortality, a trait shared by other Greek deities. He also possessed enhanced strength, agility, and stamina, far surpassing any mortal or beast. Lastly, Zeus had the power of omniscience. He was all-knowing, able to see and hear everything that happened in the world. This power, combined with his status as the judge of the gods and mortals, firmly placed him as the ultimate overseer of cosmic justice. Together, these powers painted a picture of an omnipotent, almighty leader, cementing Zeus's place as the supreme ruler of the Greek pantheon, a deity with no match in might or wisdom. Chapter 7. Zeus and the Promethean Titans Throughout his numerous divine exploits, Zeus interacted with various beings, both divine and mortal. One such significant interaction was with the Titan Prometheus, a central figure known for his cleverness and pivotal role in mankind's creation.
Prometheus, a second-generation Titan, sided with Zeus during the Titanomachy and played a crucial role in helping Zeus overthrow Cronus. As a deity, Prometheus was the champion of humankind, embodying wisdom, and known for his crafty intelligence, Prometheus is credited with creating the human race out of clay. His fondness for his creation was so profound that he sought to uplift the human race. This led Prometheus against Zeus as he defied Zeus's orders and stole the divine fire from Olympia to provide it to humankind, causing a significant advancement in civilization. The divulgence of divine fire to mortals was perceived as a capricious act by Zeus. An infuriated Zeus decided to punish Prometheus for his transgression. He had Prometheus chained to a mountain, and daily, an eagle, symbolizing Zeus's punitive justice, would peck at Prometheus's liver, which would heal overnight only to be devoured again the next day. In response to Prometheus's audacity, Zeus also inflicted a more profound punishment on mankind. He commissioned Hephaestus, the god of blacksmiths and craftsmen, to craft a woman made of clay. According to the myth, each of the gods gave her a gift, thus the name Pandora, which means all gifted. Pandora was sent to Prometheus's brother, Epimetheus, bringing along a jar. In her curiosity, she opened the jar and all evils, illnesses and hardships escaped, flooding the human world, leaving only hope inside when she managed to close the lid. These tales involving Prometheus and Zeus underscore Zeus's role in Greek mythology as the enforcer of divine law and order. It served as a suggestion that any defiance against Zeus, whether from God or mortal, would not go unpunished. Through Prometheus's story, the ancients had an understanding of human suffering, the role of hope and the price to pay for the overreaching ambitions against the gods. Chapter 8. Zeus's Temples and Cults As the supreme god of the Greek pantheon, it's no surprise that the worship of Zeus was widespread. This was carefully crafted within intricate temples, participated in elaborate festivals, and conducted by devoted cults in his honor. The architecture of ancient Greece boasts some of the most iconic temples dedicated to Zeus. The Temple of Zeus at Olympia was one of the most resplendent and renowned. Famous for its scale and grandeur, it housed the magnificent gold and ivory statue of Zeus on his throne, the statue, crafted by the brilliant ancient sculptor Phidias, was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Olympia was also the site of the ancient Olympic Games, originally held in Zeus's honor. The Games, held every four years, brought together athletes and spectators from across ancient Greece. Athletes competed in a variety of events, and winners were awarded olive wreaths, symbolically linked to Zeus, Another significant center of Zeus's worship was the Sanctuary of Zeus at Dodona. This oracle site, one of the oldest in Greece, was where priests interpreted the will of Zeus by the rustling of the sacred oak tree. An important celebration to Zeus was the Festival of Diasia. This was the most significant festival in Athens honoring Zeus Milikios, a chthonic form of Zeus connected with prosperity and purification. Athens also held the festival of the Panathenaea, aligning with Zeus's role as a sky and weather god. The cult of Zeus Lycaios also provides an interesting dimension. This cult performed rituals on Mount Lycaion, where it was believed Zeus had been brought up. A mixture of myth and possible historical tradition suggests human sacrifices may have once been part of the cult's rituals, appealed to Zeus in face of natural disasters and famine. From grand temples to significant games and festivals, various cults and ritual practices, the multifaceted worship of Zeus was woven into the fabric of ancient Greek society. It was not simply about the rituals. These spaces and practices were fundamental to the Greek societal structure, underscoring Zeus's divine status and the integral role of religion in Greek society. Chapter 9. Zeus in Art and Literature Zeus's reigning influence was not limited to the mythological tales and religious practices of ancient Greece alone. A prominent figure in history, his narrative was richly represented in ancient Greek and Roman art and literature. In Greek sculpture, Zeus was depicted as the king of gods, an imposing figure with a royal scepter often accompanied by a thunderbolt and an eagle. 
The lost statue of Zeus at Olympia, seated on a magnificent throne, made of gold and ivory by Phidias, was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Painted pottery from ancient Greece often showcased scenes from Zeus's life, presenting the myths we know today. From his victory over the Titans in the Titanomachy, to his many transformations to pursue love interests, the pottery art was a vibrant record of Zeus's adventures. Zeus was a prominent character in the two great epic poems of Homer, the Iliad, and the Odyssey. In these epics, Zeus often participated in or oversaw the story's main events, intervening directly or indirectly in the mortal world. In Hesiod's Theogony, the story of the birth of gods, Zeus's birth, rise to power, and rule are documented in meticulous detail. The influence of Zeus transcended ancient times and echoed through the modern era. His persona has been adapted in plenty of literature, theatre and even philosophy, such as in the works of Ovid, Dante and Shakespeare. His image has inspired countless artistic interpretations over the centuries, from Renaissance paintings to contemporary comic book illustrations. In popular media, Zeus has been a character in many movies, TV series and video games, allowing a wider, newer audience to connect with his story. Zeus as a figure goes beyond mere myths and worship in temples. He is ingrained in the human cultural experience, continually evolving, surviving through various forms of artistic mediums and thought. His narrative, his persona, continue to inform, entertain, and most importantly, they persist in captivating the imaginations of each new generation. Chapter 10 The Dark Side of Zeus While Zeus was respected and revered as the king of the gods and the supreme ruler of the cosmos, his story is not without its darker aspects. Most of these revolve around his relentless pursuit of lovers and his often harsh and arbitrary punishments. Zeus's many love affairs often led to adverse consequences, Hera, his wife and sister, was frequently cheated, causing a significant amount of familial strife. Zeus's relationships with various goddesses, nymphs and mortal women were often abusive, involving deception, disguise, seduction and often non-consensual engagements. Many women were transformed, punished or suffered due to Zeus's actions and the backlash from Hera. Famous examples are Io, who was turned into a cow, and Callisto, who was transformed into a bear. In many myths, Zeus resorted to physical force or shapeshifted into different forms to deceive and seduce. This was apparent in his pursuit and abduction of Europa in the form of a bull, the seduction of Leda as a swan, and the deception of Alcmene by taking the form of her husband, Amphitryon, to father Heracles. Zeus also possessed a catastrophic temper, his wrath against mortals and gods who defied him was swift and brutal. Prometheus was bound to a rock for stealing fire for the humans, with an eagle eating his liver daily. His fury was not limited to punishment, but often extended to the entire human race as well. According to legend, Zeus flooded the entire world to cleanse it of wicked men, sparing only Deucalion and Pyrrha. This aspect of Zeus, his penchant for infidelity, deceit, and his capacity for wrath, paints him in a light fair from the just and virtuous king of the gods. However, the ancients considered these traits as a reflection of their understanding of life, a blend of good and ill, as unpredictable and powerful as Zeus's thunderbolt. Chapter 11. Significant Myths Involving Zeus Zeus's life was defined by a series of well-known myths that have sustained and shaped Greek mythology. His influence and presence were widely manifested beyond his birth, reign, and affairs. Perhaps the most well-known myth involving Zeus is the Trojan War, an epic battle fundamentally influenced by Zeus, his decision to award a golden apple to the most beautiful goddess set in motion a chain of events leading to the Ten-Year War. Furthermore, throughout Homer's Iliad and Odyssey, Zeus frequently influenced the battles through his interventions, the abduction of Ganymede is another popular narrative featuring Zeus. The young mortal. A Ganymede was abducted by Zeus disguised as an eagle and brought to Olympus to serve as a cupbearer to the gods. This myth was influential, popularized in arts and literature, becoming a symbol of the homoerotic context in the classical period. Another monumental mythological narrative 
featuring Zeus related to Pandora. To punish Prometheus for stealing fire, Zeus commissioned Hephaestus to create a woman, Pandora. She unknowingly released all the miseries trapped in a jar, leaving only hope inside. This myth explains the origins of evil and misery in the world. Zeus's amorous ventures often led to transformative narratives. An example is the tale of Io, who was transformed into a cow by Zeus to protect her from Hera's wrath. The adventures of Io gave birth to multiple heroes and historical lineage that influenced Greek history, the slaying of the monster Typhon, the deadliest creature in Greek mythology, depicted Zeus's valor and power. Typhon challenged Zeus's rule, leading to an epic battle that ended with Zeus emerging victorious, reinstating peace. The narratives intertwined with Zeus also include his judgment of Paris, the birth of Athena, the sacrifice of Trojans to him, the punishment of Sisyphus and Niobe's hubris. Each myth added a dimension to his persona, his power, or his rule, reinforcing his significance. Chapter 12 The Legacy of Zeus As the supreme ruler of Olympus and the king of all gods, Zeus's footprint on not just Greek but global culture, arts and language has been nothing short of significant. His legacy transcends time, continuing to influence our modern world. In language, many expressions and words trace their origins back to Zeus. The word Thursday actually means Thor's day, Thor being the Norse equivalent of Zeus. Expressions like by Jove also evoke the essence of Zeus, with Jovi being a derivation of Jupiter, the Roman equivalent of Zeus. Zeus's influence in art reached its the apex in Roman times, when Emperor Hadrian commissioned a colossal statue of Zeus, or Jupiter, for his grand villa in Tivoli. Infused within Renaissance art, Zeus's imagery often served as a potent symbol of power and rulership. In modern times, Zeus's portrayal extends across mediums, from literature and films to video games. He has been featured in popular culture, including movies like Disney's Hercules and in Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series. His narratives and tales continue to inspire countless adaptations and artworks. They form the backbone of understanding Greek mythology, consistently retold in classrooms worldwide. His symbolism is also prominent. The eagle, associated with Zeus, is widely used as a symbol of power and majesty. Many nations, including the United States, Mexico and Egypt, feature the eagle in their national iconography. In psychology, the term Zeus complex is used to describe a person who is overbearing or controlling, reflecting the personality of Zeus. Zeus's sacred places, like the Temple of Zeus and Olympia, continue to be significant archaeological sites, educating us about ancient Greek religion, architecture, and history. Even in the realm of science, Zeus's legacy lives on. The king of the gods lent his name to the element Zirconium, element number 40 on the periodic table. In space, the largest planet of our solar system, Jupiter, is named after Zeus's Roman counterpart. Pervading language, arts, place names, popular culture, psychology and science. Zeus's legacy is far-reaching, his story continuously retold, reshaped and revered, signifying that the king of gods, though belonging to an ancient world, is, in essence, timeless. Chapter 13. Zeus versus Other Pantheons As a principal deity, Zeus parallels many other significant gods from various cultural pantheons across the world. Through comparative mythology, we can examine characters that share Zeus's characteristics and roles, providing insights into how different societies interpreted the divine power and morality. In Roman mythology, Zeus's equivalent is Jupiter, who shares numerous attributes with Zeus, including his position as king of the gods, control over the sky and thunder, and his symbolic eagle and thunderbolt. Many of Zeus's myths were adapted for Jupiter, showcasing the deep cultural influences between the Greeks and Romans. In Norse mythology, one of the parallel figures to Zeus is Odin. The all-father and king of the gods, like Zeus, Odin held supreme authority, was associated with wisdom, and oversaw justice. However, Thor, Odin's son, was associated with thunder and lightning, similar to Zeus. 
the Egyptian pantheon had Amun-Ra, who was later fused from separate deities of wind and sun, becoming the king of gods and representing creation. Like Zeus, he symbolized a divine force overseeing everything, Ra's authority over the sky, the sun, and his position as king draws many parallels to Zeus. In Hindu mythology, elements of Zeus's divine authority and roles can be found in gods like Indra, known as the king of the gods, Indra, like Zeus, had control over weather phenomena, particularly rain, thunder, and lightning. Indra was also a central figure in many myths and legends, similar to Zeus's role in Greek mythology. These comparisons across pantheons reveal our ancestors' minds, how they viewed the divine and how they embodied these beliefs in the form of gods like Zeus, Jupiter, Odin, Amun-Ra, and Indra. Despite originating from disparate cultures, these gods and their narratives show striking resemblances. Driving home the idea of universal human experience, archetypes and symbolisms in the realm of the divine. Chapter 14. Bonus Content. Zeus and Europa Extended. The tale of Zeus and Europa reveal yet another facet of the king of gods, showing his cunning, omnipotence, as well as his passionate, romantic side. This story is one of many that explore Zeus's many love affairs. In this particular tale, he became smitten with the beauty and charm of the Phoenician princess Europa. One day, as Europa was out gathering flowers with her friends in a meadow near the seaside, Zeus spotted her from his high seat on Mount Olympus. Mighty Zeus, who had his fair share of romantic pursuits, was instantly taken by the radiant Europa. To approach her without raising alarm among her companions, he decided to transform himself. Taking on the guise of a beautiful, docile white bull, Zeus descended down into the lush meadow. The bull was so striking and magnificent, with its sparkling eyes and jeweled horns, that it captured the curiosity and fascination of Europa. The bull seemed gentle and tame, allowing Europa to stroke its flank and decorate its horns with flowers. Emboldened by the bull's docility and lulled into a sense of security, Europa climbed onto its back. Seizing this opportunity, Zeus, am still in his bovine disguise, charged towards the sea and began to swim, carrying a terrified Europa on his back across the waves. Once they reached the island of Crete, Zeus revealed his true divine form to Europa. Overwhelmed by this revelation and the circumstances she found herself in, Europa eventually gave in to Zeus's will. From this union, came three sons, Minos, Radamanthes, and Sarpedon. Post this encounter, Zeus, in his attribute of love and care, ensured Europa's safety and made her the first queen of Crete. Her sons went on to have essential roles in Greek mythology, with Minos becoming a mighty king and later a judge in the underworld, Radamanthes also serving as a judge of the dead, and Sarpedon turning into a brave hero who fought in the Trojan War. The tale of Zeus and Europa, hence, is a classic example of Greek mythological narratives, illustrating love, power, divinity, and destiny, adding yet another layer to the intriguing character of Zeus. The affairs of Zeus extended. The many love affairs of Zeus have made their mark in Greek mythology. Famed for his numerous dalliances, Zeus was not known for his fidelity. In many cases, Zeus would take different forms to seduce or interact with humans, nymphs or goddesses, showcasing his uncanny ability to shapeshift. A couple of myths illustrate this unique facet. The myth of Leda is one such instance. Zeus, captivated by the beauty of Leda, the wife of the king of Sparta, transformed himself into a magnificent swan. The swan, seemingly in fear of an eagle, took refuge in Leda's arms. The unsuspecting Leda comforted the beautiful creature and was ultimately seduced by it. This union resulted in two eggs from which hatched Helen, who would later become Helen of Troy, Clytemnestra, and the twins Castor and Pollux. Another notable tale involves Danae, the daughter of King Acrisius of Argos. After a prophecy foretold that Acrisius would be killed by his grandson, he locked Danae away to prevent her from bearing any sons. However, caught the attention of Zeus, who again showing his resourcefulness and determination, turned into a shower of gold and came down into Danae's chamber. 
From their union was born the hero Perseus, who'd later fulfill the prophecy by accidentally killing Acrisius. Judgment of Paris The Judgment of Paris is an iconic tale from Greek mythology, serving as the decisive catalyst leading up to the legendary Trojan War. The myth centers around a divine contest of beauty among three goddesses, where Zeus, albeit indirectly, plays a pivotal role. It all started with the marriage of Peleus and Thetis, where all gods and goddesses were invited, except for Eris, the goddess of discord. In retaliation, Eris threw a golden apple into the celebration inscribed with To the Fairest. This led to a dispute among the goddesses Aphrodite, Hera and Athena, each believing themselves to be the rightful recipient of the apple. To avoid conflict, Zeus wisely chose not to judge the contest himself, but instead delegated that task to the mortal man Paris, Prince of Troy, and known for his astute judgment. Each goddess presented herself before Paris, promising him rewards in return for favoring them. Hera promised power and control of all Asia. Athena offered wisdom and victory in battles, while Aphrodite vowed him the love of the world's most beautiful woman, Helen of Sparta. Paris, swayed by Aphrodite's promise, awarded the golden apple to her, thus unknowingly setting in motion a series of events that would lead to the cataclysmic Trojan War. For Helen was already married to King Menelaus of Sparta, and her abduction by Paris led the Greeks to wage a war against Troy to retrieve her. The judgment of Paris brings to light an interesting aspect of Zeus's character. Despite being the most powerful of all gods, he chose not to use his authority to resolve the dispute, but instead entrusted the decision to a mortal. It indicates his wise and diplomatic nature, and his understanding of the consequences of favoring one goddess over the other. It also showcased his respect for free will and destiny, as he let the mortal Paris's decision set the course of events leading to the infamous Trojan War. In conclusion, this myth, while not directly involved Zeus, provided an important backdrop to the narrative of the Trojan War and demonstrated Zeus's strategic decision-making. Chapter 15 Conclusion As we draw our journey to a close, we realize that Zeus, the king of Olympus and chief of the Greek pantheon, was more than just a god. He was a symbol of power and authority, who, despite his personal flaws, held firm the balance of our mortal world and the divine. Zeus's guise is reflected in nature's volatile beauty, reflected in the torrent of storms and the brilliance of lightning. His complex character showcases the depths of passion, ambition, love, jealousy, vengeance, and above all, supreme power. Ultimately, Zeus remains an awe-inspiring figure, a testament to the imaginations of the ancient Greeks who added depth and gravity to their natural world by breathing life into their complex all-human gods. Zeus's stories, as we have witnessed, continue to be a fascinating exploration of human nature and the universe, inspiring us on our never-ending quest for understanding and wisdom. Thank you for embarking on this epic journey through the mythological world of Zeus, the god who still reigns supreme in the heavens of our imaginations.